Well, Dina and Mike, the patient is an unidentified woman in her 60s who lives in the city of Chicago. She returned home from China on January 13th after spending about two weeks in the Wuhan area. Right after the CDC confirmed the Chicago case this morning, city officials called a news conference to talk about the case and stress there is no immediate threat to the general public in Chicago. The latest total of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Illinois is 19, up eight, with the first cases outside of Cook County being reported in Kane and in McHenry counties. I am formally announcing a disaster proclamation for Illinois, our version of a state of emergency. Unlocking additional federal assistance as health officials confirm four new cases of COVID-19 in Illinois, bringing the total number to 11. Of all the obligations that weigh on me as governor, this is the greatest. If there are actions that I can take that will save lives in the midst of this pandemic, no matter how difficult, then I have an obligation to take these actions. Therefore, starting tomorrow evening, Saturday, March 21st at 5 p.m. until the end of April 7th, all our residents will be subject to a stay-at-home order. This was Wednesday. We will be forced to shut down our parks and the entire lakefront if people continue to flout these social distancing guidelines. A frustrated Mayor Lightfoot threatening to shut down the city's lakefront if Chicagoans didn't comply with the governor's stay-at-home mandate, particularly the part about practicing social distancing. This is a city of broad shoulders, big hearts, but ultimately we must be a city who works together. And what we must do now together is bend the curve of this disease. That is why, effective immediately, I have ordered the closure of Chicago's lakefront from north to south and south to north, along with our 606 trail and the river walk. With Illinois yet to hit its peak, there will be fewer and fewer hospital beds to go around. Right now, the state has 43% of its hospital beds available and 35% of its ICU beds. Five alternative care facilities for less severe cases of COVID-19 will give the state thousands of additional beds, 3,000 at McCormick Place alone. Tomorrow, I will be signing an executive order to extend Illinois' disaster proclamation, our stay-at-home order, and our suspension of on-site learning at schools through the end of the month of April. Folks, I've said time and time again, my decisions are hard ones, but they will follow the science. And the science says our students can't go back to their normal routine. Therefore, I am suspending in-person learning in schools for the remainder of the 2019-2020 school year. I'm Chris McGuire and I live in Downers Grove, Illinois, where I'm currently undergoing the statewide stay-at-home quarantine order. This emergency proclamation was set in place until April 30th, 2020, and as of this recording, there's no information regarding if the order will be lifted or extended to another date. Mass panic was shared as Governor J.B. Pritzker announced a 24-hour grace period for all citizens to collect their essential items from the stores. As all non-essential businesses closed, consumers began raiding store shelves for whatever disinfectant products were left. This demand for resources struck the freight industry and stock market harder than it ever has before, and there are certainly no exceptions to Jim, owner of a local shipping company, NTS Logistics. It's increased our volume a lot. It's almost like the holiday season. There's so much freight out there that needs to get to so many places faster than usual. Um, like our business, we've been shipping a lot of the PPEs and stuff that have been coming in from other countries on planes and we're sending them out to the redistribution centers. Normally it's not that busy this time of year, but <clears throat> due to the coronavirus, we are really busy and we've been on seven days a week, 24 hours a day. <clears throat> as
as we go forward, I think the, the states will start to build up an inventory of goods. The Fed will have an uh, inventory of goods for a backup to the states. Um, and then I think we'll probably have a rush like this every couple of years because as things sit in warehouses and are not utilized, if they're not rotated properly, they disintegrate because, you know, these aren't cloth things. So I think you'll see a resurgence of this process of the supply chain probably every couple of years. But I think this will carry on for the next couple of months as everything's being made and produced and, and distributed to where it needs to go. Everything moves by truck, plane, train. So I don't know that I'll have big discrepancies in what we're doing. There might be um, some swings, like this was a, a huge upswing. Uh, I know for me, there's some industries, you know, and guys that do what I do didn't have as much. Um, but, I mean, that, that's all based on relationships that you build. But, I mean, everything moves by a truck, plane, or train um, eventually. And, you know, I don't, think, I don't think it'll make a big difference in this. You might see a consolidation of a lot of companies. Um companies that utilize our services might look at us a little bit differently, might look more towards partnering up with us instead of always looking for the cheapest option. They might start looking for somebody who's going to be a true partner and be there 24-7 should something happen like this, which is what I've been working on all weekend because they know if they call me, I'm going to answer the phone. <clears throat> so, But, yeah, I don't see a whole big anything crazy happening or changing or reducing in the supply chain other than, you know, luxury goods. You know, we might just see a downtick in that. And I think as we see a shift from, depending on the rest of the world for some of the things that we've always depended on, I think we might see a more centralized in the United States uptick in the volume of production and, and that here versus importing and exporting. Stock markets are driven by... American people and the people around the world purchasing things and selling things and when you put a stop to all that it's going to stop there's no money transferring hands anymore except for in certain industries like your disinfectants, your Cloroxes and, and you're going to see those are going to look like amazing deals right now when they're really not because there's just a need for it right now and then everybody's going to realize I've got 17 gallons of bleach in my house and it's going to last me the next 20 years um so, I, you know, I'm not afraid of the market as low as it's, it's gotten because when you stop commerce worldwide and you stop people from working and you stop people from being able to go out and spend money and do things and sell things, it's just, it's just the way the process goes. And once we all start doing things again, it'll bounce right back up. But if we wait too long, it might take a lot longer for it to recover. As freight companies struggle to keep up with the ongoing demand for materials, other businesses decide to stay open, creating a work-from-home experience for their employees such as Bob Blair Smith, regional head of a popular cellular brand, business and technology sales. So for me, I guess I would say it's, it's not much different. Um, I spend a lot of time on uh, calls, both internal and with some of our customers. Um, I guess it's more efficient because I'm not commuting, but I still, when we're not under this coronavirus, I still may have to drive in different parts of the region or even um, not just in Illinois, but out of state too, depending on what the what the situation is. So um, yes, it's easier and it's more efficient. Um, in a way, I wish I had more time to block off to do things around the house, but I'm getting a lot of work done too, so I would say it's more efficient. I like connect, I'm pretty social, you know, I work in a sales office, a business sales office, so we're very interactive with one another. So I, I think the biggest hurdle is the isolation from my colleagues and people that I enjoy seeing every day. And even the ones that aren't in my department, just knowing that they're there and that we were part of a bigger company, that's that's probably what I miss. Because of the industry we're in, wireless, we're, we're, we all carry letters with us in our cars that say from the Department of Homeland Security, we're authorized to do mission critical work under the COVID-19 crisis. So. The specific thing that our team is doing is we're helping convert. There's an inventory shortage of these MiFi's. So to make up for that, we're taking these little Android phones and we're converting them into hotspots, even though, you know, you can use a, a Wi-Fi hotspot setting on any phone. 
that's all it can do. Like you can't make calls or get texts from it. So we basically created a product and then they're being given out to homeless kids and low income students, families, so that they have broadband internet access on the cellular network so they can do homework uh, while everyone's remote learning instead of at their schools. Uh, so I think that's not just something that's keeping us busy, but it's really important for our community. I don't know that it would be the same way it is now. I think there'll still be office. There'll probably be a good migration back to offices, mostly because people are just ready to go back to normalcy. But I do think more and more businesses will decide that they can work from home. So that may not be right for my business. It might be not right for some people's business. But I do think the trend will be more and more businesses will have home-based employees. As companies struggle to maintain a productive environment, Chicago public schools as well as local school districts like District 99 have suspended all school events and replaced them with online learning. Downers Grove North Principal Mrs. Janice Schwartz and District 99 Superintendent Dr. Hank Thiele speak out about the decisions being made in the district. So I will start with maybe the, the, the big events um of prom and graduation so those we just recently rescheduled because we're not allowed to gather safely in may so we've rescheduled those to the end of june and our hope is, is that we'll be able to be together uh, we had had a plan in place for if that were to happen um so when the governor made the announcement we were able to release that information that same day to our seniors and to their families um, the other thing that wasn't necessarily rescheduled but we had to redo is how we teach and what we teach um, and that looked different based on the governor's um uh, how long we were going to be out. So if he said we were out for a couple weeks, then we responded in, in one way. Once we realized we were going to be out for the rest of the year, we had to respond in a different way. And so um, most importantly, I guess, our teachers had to figure out what were the, what was the essential learning and how can they get that to students in a modified schedule. But they're struggling too. Um, one, they miss their students. I mean, I, that's the most common thing I hear is how much they just can't believe that they're not going to get to end with their, with their classes. Um, but they're having to take everything that they've taught and, and teach it you know, with tools maybe that they've never used before. So they're having to learn technology and also figure out like, okay, how, you know, what, what should I be teaching knowing that not all of the students can engage. So it's been a lot of work on our teachers and I think it's been really hard for them because they don't have the social connection, um, but they're also very positive um, and they're doing whatever they want for their, you know, whatever they can to uh, help their students, that's what they're doing. So uh, they're also collaborating a lot with getting support from each other, so I think that's really good too. For some students, face-to-face, -face, classroom setting, traditional learning is very effective for them. For some students, it's not. For some students with a specific teacher, that's gr a great classroom experience. For others, it's not, right? And I, and I think uh, learning is learning and relationships are relationships. Right now, the way that we're doing it is probably, for some students, far less effective than traditional learning was. For some of our other students, this may be far more effective. You know, if, you, if you're a student that has a lot of social anxiety and waking up and going to school every day is a, a nightmare experience for you, right now you're probably loving online learning and remote learning and thriving. If you're a student that the whole reason you go to school every day is to interact with your friends and to be on your sports team and to hang out with the band or whatever that is, then this is a nightmare, you know? So um, what we do know is that between 80 and 85% of our students are at least checking in on their attendance every day. Um, we know that uh, kids are engaging in remote learning and as you know, that looks different depending on the course you're in, the teacher you have, where you're at in the school, you know, in that curriculum pathway. Um, you know, PE is gonna look different than band. And, you know, some courses translate well to remote learning. Others, you know, if you go back to, you're an orchestra, you're not gonna have orchestra rehearsal, you know, like you typically do. It just doesn't translate, you know, so, um, when you say how effective it is, I'm going to go back to that. It depends, right? It depends mm -hmm. on the the student, the teacher, the course, the curriculum, the content, where you're at in that particular class. You know. Um, I think our immediate impact in the fall is going to be determining which students are on target and which students are not. And some of our courses, as you know, are sequential and they build on 
skills that they should have learned last year. And so for those students who did not have the opportunity to learn those for a variety of reasons, we're gonna to have to work really hard to get them up to speed. So um, I think we're going to feel this in our schools for a long time. Um, I also think that our teachers have learned a lot of skills and our students have learned a lot of skills that might allow for additional opportunities in the classroom, even when we're back face to face. So I think it will change the face of education in a lot of different ways. What I do think changes is uh, people will be more flexible in their time because they found ways where they can be, right? I think you're going to see a lot more teachers offering up remote uh, office hours or times where they can dial and get help. Uh, everybody's getting very comfortable with video chatting and those kinds of things now. So in the future, you know, if you can't meet up with your teacher at, you know, right after school, I think it will be more likely that in the future a teacher will be like, hey, you know, you want to just hop on a video chat at eight o'clock tonight, you know, after you're done with practice and I'm done with play rehearsal, right? Because that I think that you're going to see a lot of that, a lot more flexibility in how people work and, and use their time and their tools. I, I don't think that goes away. You can't, you know, you can't forget about everything you've learned in this. Um, I think also the big thing that's going to change is a new lens on what we think is important and, and essential, right? Because we're all looking at that, you know, what's important in your life, what's essential, what, what do you actually have to have to make it through day to day? And our teachers are looking at the same thing, you know, through the last seven weeks of school, what's essential? What do kids really, it's not just nice to learn or, hey, this will give them a leg up in the future or here's a great experience for them, but what do they absolutely need to know to advance? And that, that essentialist look on life and school, I think is something that's gonna stick with us for a while. With the governor coming out to cancel the rest of the semester for all schools in Illinois, the graduating class of 2020 was finally given hope as to when they would graduate, while underclassmen still wonder what their future school careers will look like. I think a lot of people's feelings, and I know this is mine, is that we just want to see each other again and be able to say like goodbye and just have like a solid goodbye. And also with prom getting moved back, I know that also is a uh, a good thing for a lot of people because that's something that a lot of people definitely look forward to. Um, I'm afraid I won't be able to get um, into summer school and I'm afraid of what's going to happen with my SATs as well as um, if, if summer school doesn't happen does that mean everything's going to be on credit recovery and is it still going to be weighed the same? I think that my senior year has definitely been affected uh, and especially the SAT because in case you didn't know, it's actually required to graduate DGN. You have to take the SAT, which A is a little bit weird because only some colleges actually require the SAT. Some require the ACT instead. Some are art schools and don't even require that. But I wasn't planning on taking the SAT until I found out that you were legally required to, to graduate DGN. And then I was starting to look into it, and as soon as I was like, I got everything set up and I was about to sign up for the SAT itself, I find out that it got canceled. And it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I get it. You don't want a bunch of people sitting in one room. That's definitely a uh, at-risk sort of activity. But I'm hoping at the very least, after this whole situation, DGN makes it so that the people who... Um, our juniors and seniors this year don't have to take the SAT in order to graduate because that's something that was out of our control that we tried to get done, but also just couldn't. I feel like it's not going to affect me a ton individually because they can't hold it against me personally. Like trying to get into schools and stuff, it's not like it's only me. It's every junior in the country. So I'm not super terrified of that because it's a constant thing across the country. It's something everyone's going through. So I think they're gonna have to adapt, like the schools, the colleges, like the admission processes, they're gonna have to adapt somehow. I know there's like a lot of big tests in your junior year, so I just feel like I won't be prepared at all, or like I don't know what classes like to take. Like, I don't know if I should be taking AP English or regular English. I don't know if I should like be taking like just honors classes. Like I'm just clueless on that. I feel like online education is effective if it's done correctly. 
like, our school, I feel, is doing really well with it. Um, like, teachers email every day. Some teachers do Zoom calls every day, which is really good, keeping up with the students. But, and colleges too. Um, I know my sister has online classes every day, scheduled blocking, and she's able to call the teachers, ask questions. But I know of uh, some schools that are not doing quite as well as we might be. Like, just not a lot of schools were like completely prepared for this much e-learning. I personally think it's like not very effective because having to, because basically the teachers they send out the material, but they can't really teach new concepts. I guess if that makes sense, because it's really hard to teach something brand new through just a video or through an online lecture. Like it has to be an in-person thing. I feel like so it's gonna be hard. Like because. How do I explain this? Like, things we learned before quarantine, that's not gonna carry us until the end of the year. Like, we're gonna have to learn new concepts, like in math, in science. We have to build on the things we already learned, and it's gonna be really hard to, like, absorb that information when you're not in a classroom setting, because learning online is just not as effective, especially for people who have, like, concentration issues or, like, maybe don't even have access to, like, internet, I guess. It affects everyone differently. I think it's been really difficult to like keep up with classes right now just because as a senior I decided to take some challenging classes like I'm in like the honors French 5 class and AP stats and that can be kind of like tough on you just because I've had like to write lectures and papers and like give presentations. I have like my end of the year portfolio for journalism so it's just like a lot of big deadlines. And because we're kind of remote, you're not like there to talk to the teacher and just ask for advice or just like have them help you when you feel kind of lost. It's just difficult in that way. It has been more stressful because obviously being in like an environment surrounded by people kind of making you do your work, it's everyone's doing the same thing, but now that you're kind of on your own, you go your own pace. And I've always been really bad with time management, so it's never that great. Because there's also um, assignments where it's it would take like three hours to do, and even though the time slot could be allotted two days, there's still other things to do with the same kind of time. So it's just a lot of things on top of each other, and it feels that we're not even grasping what we're learning. Because um, like math and Spanish, you kind of need to be seeing what they're doing in order to comprehend what they're teaching. But now it's kind of all over the place. Like you have to, we'd copy it down notes that it's just on a page and you can't really learn anything from that. You kind of need someone to talk to you about that. And maybe they'll change their way of teaching now that we're stuck until the end of like the school year. But for now it's kind of stressful trying to, you know, grasp. Cause I want to have a good grade. I want to understand that's the main point of school. So if I can't really do that, it's just a big struggle throughout it. It kept me isolated in my own home and uh, sort of got me to try to stick to my own work ethic, which I'm not going to lie, is not exactly the best. Um, it's one of those things where, yeah, I'll get the work done, but there's some of the less important work that I just feel like shrugging off, and all of a sudden, if you have a single eye on your report card, you don't pass the year. Which, it's weird because apparently the teachers are able to put in an eye for individual assignments. And that means if you don't do that assignment, you don't pass the year. And that's made it so that teachers have this weird sort of power struggle where they're able to force students to do work that wouldn't affect their grade. It's sort of like... Uh, you know how, like, when you're in class, sometimes there's busy work, and you're like, I've been doing all right in the class, I've got a 95, I can shrug off this one piece of homework. And all of a sudden, you're at home and you do that exact same thing, and if you don't do it, then you're not going to graduate. It's just a really bad situation overall, and I think that the administration could have handled it a lot better. I'm the type of person who 
tends to need a lot of like extra help when it comes to school. And I usually need like one-on-one -on -one time with teachers because school, I struggle with school. And so like e-learning has been really hard because a general email sent to like the entire class isn't enough for me because I need more like individualized support a lot. I'm back and forth on it. I'm, I'm back and forth because like I have unlimited time to do it basically and I can do it comfortably and like in my house and the way I want to do it uh, but also at the same time it's pretty difficult because some of my teachers it's kind of hard to do like the work that they've expected us to do uh, just through like Google Classroom or just like uh, by writing down instructions on what to do it can be kind of difficult so uh, I'm back and forth but I'd say it's a good substitute for like regular school. It's the best we can have, probably. This entire e-learning situation and the corona situation has sent almost everybody into like a really, really deep depression. And I've definitely found myself affected by that, pretty much just sitting in this exact box of my bed for like the entire day. And the only time I've actually interacted with other people was talking to them online, procrastinating, doing the schoolwork that I know I need to do. Um, and I wish I could say things are going to be different for other people, but almost everybody I've talked to has talked about how, like, excuse me, how deeply this has impacted their social life and how for the first time in their life they would literally rather be at school which I can guarantee you'll never hear anybody else say that they would rather be at school than at home. So I have bad anxiety and on and off depression, and my friends are one of the things, are like one of the few things that like make me genuinely happy and like enjoy everything. And so just not being able to see my friends is just really, really tough. It makes you feel like you don't really have people there, even though, I mean, some people are good friends, they're going to be there for you no matter what, but some people maybe, um, they just, on a day-to-day -day basis at school, they kind of cheer you up, make you feel better, you just kind of joke around, you're having fun, and you forget about when you're at home and you don't get to see them every day in class, you forget about those little things that kind of like cheer you up, make you feel better when you're having a bad day. So it's kind of hard to not have those people in your life anymore that you're not in close contact with. Some people that you might not hang out with all the time outside of school because you do see them every day. And so I guess it does make you feel really antisocial. Like you don't have anybody to talk to really. And now we're probably at five or six weeks of quarantine. We're pretty far in and I live with my mom, my stepdad and my brother's home from college now, which is nice that I get to see him because I don't get too often, but we're all kind of in our own worlds with work and school and stuff, so there's not a lot of communication with friends, you know, just antisocial. We don't know for sure if my dad might get, like, fired or anything because people at his work have been laid off, and, like, recently, um, my dog passed away, and before that we had to pay, like, a lot of financial stuff for him to get better. So then it was just kind of that. We were trying to lay low on money, but from my perspective, I do not know. We're just trying to save. I am the type of person who's constantly out doing something, and I get really anxious when I'm by myself, I guess. So I constantly am distracting myself and putting myself in situations like with a bunch of people because I love being surrounded by like friends and just people in general. So it's been really hard. like not being able to see people, I guess. And yeah, because that's not what I'm used to. The outbreak of COVID-19 is one of the greatest pandemics in modern day history, leading to unprecedented measures taking place after the worst stock market crash since 1929. This left the world unknown as to if we would ever return to normal, and this gave us one final question. How much quarantine is too much?